Hello again. I talked a while ago about the widespread belief which people held 50 years ago that we were heading towards another ice age or period of glaciation as it is technically known. Now I'm not a scientist and I only approach all this from the position of an interested layman but there's a lot about the modern ideas about climate which leave me scratching my head in perplexity. It might be me, I'm, it's quite entirely possible that I'm just not bright enough to grasp all these complex ideas. For instance, like most people in Britain, to whom I have talked lately, I regard summer this year as having been a bit of a dead loss. That is to say, damp and cold, without very much at all in the way of hot, sunny weather. The Met Office, though, the official body in Britain whose job it is to record and predict weather, tell us that this is quite untrue. In the description to this video, I give a link to a news item which quotes a meteorologist from the Met Office who tells us that in fact this summer in Britain has been hotter and drier than average. Becky Mitchell of the Met Office says that it's not been wetter on average, but we've seen a lot of reports on the news about the flooding. That's why it may feel like a bad summer with not much warmth or sunshine. I am irresistibly reminded of the old saying, which is rather vulgar, don't piss on my head and tell me it's raining. I don't need to read news about flooding. I need only look out the window, as I'm doing right now, to know that this weather is not what I hope to see in August. Do any English viewers have the impression that this summer has been hot and dry? Or have they all been misled by news reports about floods, as Becky Mitchell suggests? The British Met Office is, of course, desperate to assure us that the country is getting hotter every year, which is perhaps why they've persuaded one of their staff to make this announcement. As I say, I'm not a scientist. I can, however, read graphs fairly well. And in the thumbnail to this video, I give one which shows how the Earth's temperature has fluctuated over the last million years or so. Perhaps I'm a complete fool and dunderhead, but it looks to me from this as though the temperature shoots up rapidly every 100 or 150,000 years and then falls back down again. The present rise in temperature doesn't look as though it is as high as it was 125,000 years ago. In other words, this looks like a pattern which has nothing to do with industry, pollution or anything else. Just something which happens. I might well have thought that I got all this muddled up, were it not for the fact that when I look at experts who are predicting terrible disasters relating to rising sea levels and so on, they do seem to be saying exactly that. The Royal Society, for example, are firm believers in man-made climate change, and I'd give a link above to something they produced called How Fast Are Sea Levels Rising? The answer seems to be not very fast at all. They give a figure of a sixth of an inch a year. Towards the end of the text, though, we find an extraordinary sentence. Sea level in the last interglacial warm period, around 125,000 years ago, peaked at probably 5 to 10 metres above the present level. During this period, the polar regions were warmer than they are today. I mean, am I missing something here? The Arctic and Antarctic were warmer than they are now, and sea levels were between 15 and 30 foot higher than they are now. What caused this terrible state of affairs? Was that man-made global warming as well, before Homo sapiens were even living in Europe? I'm not a climate change denier. <coughs> I'm rather somebody who has many questions about the accepted narrative. One thing which does raise my suspicions a little is that all this is just a little bit too similar to the Bible story of the Great Flood. It is, in other words, a mythic narrative in which humanity is pu punished for its sins. Viewers <coughs> will probably recall that mankind grew very wicked, according to the story in Genesis. People were greedy, cruel and did whatever they wanted without any thought for right and wrong. 
They were punished by a huge flood which overwhelmed the civilization of the time. The story which we are now being told is much the same, that our greed and selfishness combined with the way that we treat the natural world has caused retribution to fall upon us and that we too will be drowned by rising sea levels. It is an apocalyptic vision. The only way we can escape this judgment day is to repent and give up our luxurious lifestyles. Stop using aeroplanes, take foreign holidays, get rid of our cars, close down the power station, stop eating meat, keep our houses cold by turning off the central heating. In short, we must purify ourselves by adopting a puritanical lifestyle and this will avert the wrath to come. It's almost as though this is a modern religion 